Morning, dear. Mm. No, it's my, <clears throat> my throat, my voice, because Brandon. Go ahead and call the meeting order. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, first up, we have uh, from the Northwest Stark Hospital. Uh, Good morning. Thank you guys for letting me be first on the agenda. It's kind of an honor to be here to the room. I am Keith. I've been here for gosh, about six weeks now. I joined the team uh, right before Thanksgiving. I joined them from Arizona before that, Texas, Oklahoma. So yes, I've seen snow, it's okay, we'll get used to it. Um, I've served in different capacities, CEO of Baylor Skyline Health for 12 years, large organization in Texas. Um, I was CEO and Chief Experience Officer for Arizona Division of Dignity Health. Uh, and then of course here serving as CEO. I'm honored to be here. I've met some of the team in the community and I'll continue to do that. Um, as we uh, you know, work together on what do we, what do, we do in healthcare for Stark County? I do want to give a couple of quick updates if I can, uh, just on things going on. As you know, obviously the mandate was upheld for CMS, and so what does that look like for us? So I want you guys to be, be assured that the, the healthcare team, uh, we've done everything we can, and I feel very comfortable with either having a, an exemption uh, or vaccination at the hospital. So we don't really have anybody at risk um, because of that mandate. So healthcare will continue as it has, um, which I'm very proud that our team was able to work through that. We were. We were not quite there um, just about three or four weeks ago. We had about 45 people on the list. So it was nice to get that taken care of. Um, as far as healthcare, you know, Stark is interesting. I grew up in a small town uh, on a farm in Oklahoma, 2,300 acre farm. Grandfather was the only doctor in town, uh, you know, Cherokee Indian physician. That's just the way it was. Um, here, it reminds me a lot of that. Because you've, got the, you've got care needs here. And then what does that look like? And I will tell you, Stark Hospital, I've been impressed um, with what they do here, and I'm impressed with the positions that this community has. Um, you're typically in the top quartile, which means 75th percentile or better in many of the categories that we track, quality, <laughs> experience, and other elements across the country. That's not just comparing to small hospitals, it's comparing to everybody across the country. So really, really impressive. We're gonna use that to continue to build on how do we recruit continual support here. Um, one of the things that I'm evaluating now, and I'll continue to do that, um, and we'll partnerships from, from many of the EMS as well. I, I've met some, obviously, your teammates, and I went to have breakfast at one of the restaurants here. It was really good. Uh, I saw your those, good. That's it. Yeah, exactly. Thank you for that. Um, and we're going to work together in partnerships on just what does this community need and how do we continue to increase the services available. Um, just, I don't have a lot of other kind of history right now as I'm still developing the knowledge and understanding the, the players here, but I just want to leave you with three guiding principles I think that are important. Uh, I live by, it's love one another, welcome feedback, lead change. And within that element, we have to find ways to provide healthcare as close to the patient as possible. And I think with, with current healthcare um, changing and evolutionizing, we can do that in different ways. So more to come, look forward to it. I'll probably work with many of you, I'm sure in different capacities as we, as we find ways to do this. So thank you for your time this morning. Thank you.
Dan, you're up next. Come on up. Oh, good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Um, I'm happy to have with me today Angela Schwink <laughs> as our asset manager. I spelled her name wrong on the sheet. So I left the W off. Yeah. <laughs> that happens. Yeah. But in the future going forward, I should have somebody proofread. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so um, we're really excited to have her on board for the asset manager position. She's got a big list ahead of her. And uh, I think she's pretty excited to <laughs> tackle it. Um, currently, we have five open spots for CDL drivers with number six leaving us on the 24th. Um, we've been running ads uh, for part-time, full-time, and the construction inspector. Uh, no bites on full-time or the construction inspector yet. We did hire one part-time driver, um, Ashley Billy. Um, she's currently driving bus and she's going to work in between shifts. So uh, we're going to put her in truck number 50 and let her do the um, Coons Lake, Bass Lake, and some little divisions on 700 East. Um, that truck 50 is a smaller truck, so she can get in there and sand where we don't have to send a big tandem truck there. So she has in dot experience, and uh, we're hoping she's going to like it and try to come on board. Uh, tonight, I'm going to go in front of the council and see if we can get the drivers a raise um, to try to help attract some applications, because right now there's just no applications mm -hmm. coming in. So We'll see how that goes tonight. <clears throat> uh, the grant status, um, you'll be seeing uh, the 22 is open right now, the open call. So we're working on uh, getting that paperwork processed. Um, we're gonna submit hot asphalt projects for 600 East from Robbins Ditch to Highway 30 and Range Road. <laughs> from 250 North to Total Road or 300 South is what we're hoping to get funding for. Uh, the grant that we got last year uh, for the 700 East project, all the bidding is being advertised on the 20th and 26th. And hopefully the sealed bids will be opened here on February 7th. So uh, we're doing okay for the grants. Uh, equipment, I'm putting together a spec sheet for a new tandem truck. Uh, we've been over to Cruise here in town, talk about a dump body. They're working on uh, getting us a quote. So that'd be pretty exciting if we could keep that mm -hmm. in the county. Um, bridges, uh, bridge number seven. Currently, um, we had to do a selection rating for the construction inspection. It has been done, um, but we haven't uh, announced who won it yet. Bridge 137 is on schedule. Bridge 59, we have a meeting today with NDOT to ask for more funding for that project. Um, Chip Seal, we just have a list of roads that we're considering. Uh, in the shop, we replaced all the lights with LED bulbs. It's much brighter in there. Um, so should lower the cost and be more efficient. Um, we're working on a project to run electric along the fence where we're parking the trucks at so we can plug them in. Um, that turned out to be a little bigger project than we first thought. So we'll be putting some bids out on that project. Uh, roadsides, we do have the chopper out last week and this week cut and brush. Um, currently it's down there on English Lake, somewhere around 400 South, 500 South working. Uh, we finished up cutting out a solar farm area and uh, we headed up on 700 East. And I think we got all the way up to 250 North. And uh, 
So there's a little bit more to do in that area. Um, past couple of weeks, we've been trimming trees still with the bucket truck on 700 East. Um, today we're chasing hangers. So they're out cutting trees today as well. On the training asset side, we, uh, December 29th, we went over to Marshall County, sent four drivers over for an LTAP sponsored training. Um, January 11th, four employees went over to Plymouth to uh, underground pipeline training. And tomorrow we're gonna send three employees for more training. <coughs> Angela's one of the lucky ones to go since she'll be involved in calling in the location of the pipes mm -hmm. where we wanna dig. And then um, solar project. We're still waiting on a road use agreement from the lawyer. Um, I'm meeting with First Era this afternoon. He's here today. Um, the Mammoth Project is applying for driveway permits. Um, we're not going to issue any until we get the road use agreement. So, have you spoken to anybody at Barnes and Thornburg yet? Uh, no, I have not. That may be something we don't know. Yeah, expedite. Mm -hmm. uh, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Bill, have you talked with anybody yet? Uh, I called about setting an appointment up. Um, I don't have the date or the time yet. I mean, we're, but we're at January 18th, and we yeah. haven't heard anything. We hired yeah. them back last year. We need to hear something from them. Right. Uh, yeah. I'll get his name. <laughs> So you can have Justin look into that. Right. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, thank you, gentlemen. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Wood and Fancy. The monies that has come in for the month of December. And I wrote down there on the side, that's what I, I rebuild insurances mm -hmm. and I got some co-pays and some self-pays, but up here at the 8,000, that's from the Acumed. They are finally starting to get the money in after crossing over mm -hmm. all the insurances. So maybe next month, it hopefully will be bigger. Okay. And then I got this from collection. Okay. Uh, Jonathan O'Hara, $242.16. And then I got these two payments from small claims. Small claims, $25 and another $25. Okay. Morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Everybody, Janet. Um, I'll settle here by you guys. <coughs> First off, good morning. Um, we've uh, had a couple people out recently due to COVID. One is still out. Uh, she should have been in shift today. Um, so I'm working the truck today. Um, I had one person out due to a back injury from moving a patient from a house to a car. Um, uh, he's back. He's back. She's back today. He was out COVID, then he was out injured. Now he's back. Um, good news is I'm happy. I'm glad he's back. Back injuries, you know, they cost us a lot of money. So, um, as far as operation goes, we uh, changed a couple of policies, uh, started implementing some things where I, I just want to let you aware of them. Um, we are making it mandated. So if you work full time, you have to sign up to work one weekend day every three weeks. That's our biggest problem is fell on the weekends. Mm -hmm. So this is to help alleviate that problem. Uh, for part timers, uh, we're requiring them to sign up for 24 hours a month. Before there was no policy, they can just be on a roster and not work here. So we're now making them, uh, instead of being just a t-shirt, we're, we're making them work um, every month now. Um, I really haven't had any flack from anybody on the uh, part-time thing. Um, so that's a good thing. Um, personnel, we, I told you last month, we're having one girl come on full-time from the part-time list. 
I did hire one part-time gentleman uh, named George Hayes. Um, we're still trying to determine his hire date. Um, that's a him issue. I got notified last night about another part-time guy coming back. I'm making him reapply. He hasn't been here for a couple of years. It's not fair for him to just go on back. So we want to go through a process, make sure uh, he's up to date. Um, and then he wants to work weekends. So outstanding. I love that idea. Um, as far as, uh, let me grab the sheet. Because I thought I had it memorized. Uh, training. The Lisa, who's right here, right behind me. Um, you know, the county got the grant for education. The It's $50,000 per entity or $5,000 per employee per year. Um, we have employees, we're looking to send them the classes. Uh, that's part of the project, the thing we're going to talk about later. One of them as a medic, I can go to a class, it has to be more than 40 hours. Uh, critical care paramedic is 80 to 100. It's a two week process, anywhere from $1,000 to $1,500 for the class. But if I apply for it and I get accepted, they'll pay for that. Um, the only stipulation is when I pass this, um, it, uh, there has to be incentive from the county. So that, like it has to be a wage increase. I'm not asking for that yet on critical care paramedics because that's one of those headaches I have to fight. I'm gonna do one at a time. That's what we're doing the advanced stuff today. Um, but we'll talk about that here in a little bit. Safety, I told you about the injury. Um, ambulances, uh, not, uh, not just an ambulance, it has to get oil changed next week. Other than that, I haven't had any issues with it. Uh, Medic three, uh, it's good. Medic two, it has been good. Knock on wood, uh, has many issues with it. Um, all the other trucks, they have been no issues. Um, I was notified uh, this morning that uh, the Grover Town Ambulance uh, 514, uh, when you're driving down the road in the back as a patient, there's no heat. It's kind of blowing out cool air. So I'm going to contact the Auto Park Chevy. Is this something you can fix? And uh, contact them about that. 4149, um, I had an oil change done on it. And they found an oil leak uh, somewhere between the Transmission, oil pan, don't know where it's at yet. We're still trying to figure that out. Um, I I was concerned about there was a loud noise coming from the left rear. I thought it was right, but it's left. It's a knuckle. I'm not a car guy, so it's a knuckle and a bushing. Um, they quoted at $1,228.57. I do have the quote hanging on the wall if you want to see that. Um, base maintenance. Um, I've installed cabinets so far at Grovertown and Knox bases. I did that for six hours yesterday at Knox. Ran into another electrical issue, so we've got to fig figure that out. Um, Medic three door, it was snapped. The coil, the spring at the top, actually snapped in two places. Uh, that got replaced. Uh, it was either that or we're not going to get out that door. Um, and at the same time, I found out there's brackets that are broke. Um, Literally, it's just in there free spinning. There's nothing attached to it. All the I have the quotes for that door to be fixed, as well as the garage door openers to be replaced. They're 32 years old. Um, I spoke to Mark about it briefly in Rachel's office. Um, my concern is it's 32 years old. Um, I know it's not a cheap item and I had them quote it. I have the quote and it's actually in here. Um, so just to fix the garage door, it was $1,012.30. That's for all the hinges and all the rollers and the labors. Um, now we're talking about the garage door openers. This is the part that makes me cringe. I don't have it in my budget. It's three thousand six hundred twenty-five dollars sixty-eight cents. This is using um, right here in town. Um, DC garage doors. Um, another gentleman quoted to fix the doors, and he wanted eight thousand eight hundred and three dollars. I have that quote if you want to see it. Um, And here's the bill for the, oh, I'm sorry, Nancy, I forgot to give this to you. 
Um, the repair to fix the doors is $1,131.74. Uh, there's brackets broken drum tone as well. The two main ones up the top, they were snapped. Um, the problem was if you open the garage door, the whole door. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that was an emergency <laughs> fix. I fixed it. Um, it's either that or something get injured. Ambulance is going to get damaged. So. so what you're looking at as far as to do these, the openers? Yeah, yeah. the openers. And because it's more than I have my budget, I asked Rachel, I asked Mark, um, spoke to Travis about this. I'm uh, concerned that this is a, I'm going to mess it up. It's a capital capital purchase. All right. Um, I don't know how we do that. And that's what I'm trying to bring to you. Yeah, need to be fixed. Um, uh, we'll be out of two cap. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Make a motion to take out two cap and fix the garage doors for three thousand six hundred twenty-five dollars and sixty-eight cents. I'll second that motion. All in favor? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Eric, can you get me a copy of that estimate? You can actually have that copy. Um, last month, we talked about an ambulance. Uh, you guys told me to go ahead and try to find pricing on an ambulance. You go to page two of the handouts I gave you. Um, that is the quote for the analyst that matches medic one. That's the one we got in North Judson. Um, you're going to see a little price change because everything's changed. Oh. Uh, of course, everything's going up nowadays. We get that. Um, part of that price increase is the power load and the power cot. That wasn't put in the other purchase. Um, a power load power cot is roughly $48,000. Uh, so that's one price change with Striker. Um, and the other problem we have with uh, any ambulance right now is if you go to page three, they're two years out to get in the ambulance. I had this meeting in December. He was telling me October, November of 23 before we can get the ambulance. Now let's do the chassis. Um, I like to keep them all the same. I don't want to change anything. Uh, it's a four chassis that we have in Medic One. Um, if we wait on this, you're going to see a price change in Striker. They gave us notice as of February 1, they're increasing 7% on all their products, which is the Striker Cot, Striker Power Load, uh, Striker Stair Chairs, you know, anything Striker that owns, even the, the monitor, which is Physio, they're increasing their prices. This is the only quote you got from that company? Because with this amount of money, you are going to need multiple quotes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, from that company, or I mean, all other other companies. Other companies. Like, yeah. did you get any other quotes besides for you? I did not. I just went off what they went with last year. Like, you uh, definitely you want to get two more. more. Okay, two more. Yeah. Okay. Or whatever you can find with that, you know, two more quotes to work. With. Okay. All right, I will do that. <clears throat> um, the other items I need to talk about are the ENT advanced. Uh, I'm just going to say advanced for short from now on. Um, an advanced EMT, which is actually my partner today, Jeff. Um, it wasn't planned that he was going to be here with me, but uh, it kind of works out. Um, so as a paramedic, I'm allowed to do a lot of things. Jeff's just underneath me, and then there's a basic EMT. As an advanced EMT, Jeff can start IVs, start IOs. He can give meds. He can uh, put them on a monitor which is great for us right now because we are short three medics. I mean, I'm working in medic one right now because we don't have anybody. If I can get an EMT to work that position, I could have Jeff work it. Then of course, if it's a full arrest, we can do an intercept. Um, for our EMT, advanced EMTs, Jeff, I have one more that works here part-time for now. Um, but I, I want to increase their wages for one. And then two, Lisa with her education, Grant, um, we have four people who are going to go to an advanced EMT school. With that grant, remember, it says you have to be able to get a pay raise once you get your certification. Because the class is three months, that means more than 40 hours. That's not the issue. Um, I have a 
we're trying to hold the class here in our county. Um, we have, like I said, our four people. Obviously, we're going to open up to a max of 10. Uh, first class, when it starts small, keep it under control for now. But that's the problem. We have to give them that incentive um, to take the class per their education grant. So you see the job description of the main CMT. Um, uh, Rachel is uh, patient with me. I appreciate you. Thank you. Because I had so many things from National Registry to, which, yeah, it's a technical term, but it doesn't match what we need to do. Um, but what I need to do is create a line item uh, right now. Um, uh, Full-time EMT is less than 15 right now an hour. Uh, my goal is to go to 17 for a full-time um, or for the advanced EMT. Um, that pay increase will, will show that you get, you're doing your education, you continue your advanced, you stay at the 17. If you lose it and go down in your basic, you're at a basic pay then. Just because you have it now and you lose it, you don't get to keep it. But um, And then for the four people going through class, I want to make sure that uh, this is in place so we meet the education standard that uh, Lisa and her, well, it's not your company. No, but, it's work one. It yeah, is, it's work it's one. Actually through work one. Yeah. So this grant is through work one? It's the next level jobs grant. Okay. And there's no county match to that? Uh, I don't believe so. Okay. I, I was kind of the middle guy that just directed them to work <laughs> one. So, but we can. But is it is it going to be filed under the county's tax ID or? I don't know. I don't, know. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, I'm just kind of the connector, so, but we can check into that. If you do go through with this grant, I need a little more information mm -hmm. on the grant information. Okay. Uh, okay. I'm, I'm sure I'll work with Lisa close on that. Because it was announced on a radio or WKVI, and uh, next day I called her. I was like, hey, mm -hmm. I have ideas. <laughs> so, um, that's, so this is where the advanced EMT needs to come in as a light item. Um, I'm trying to get the job description and then uh, the line item put in. So we we just have to approve the job yes. description. Yeah. And then I go to council tonight, right? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. So there's going to be just one advanced EMT? Or is it right now that we have two. We have one part-time, one full-time. Jeff is our full-time. Uh, he's out of North Judson, which is nice because that is the base where we have the least amount of medics right now. But they're really not under that job description, right? They'll be under that job yeah. description, yes. If the salary gets approved for it. Yeah. Well, I'd make a motion uh, we set the job description up for the advanced EMT. I'll second that motion. All those in favor? Right. Um, I had <laughs> another item to bring up. Uh, back in, was it November? Mm -hmm. November, we brought up wanted to change the structuring for our sick time, our vacation time. I guess it come back next next year. Um, uh, Cause it also came to me as one of the new girls coming on next month. We talked about bereavement. Um, this is what made me come to Rachel with it. Right now, if sick time, you gotta take three sick days to equal one. Cause we work 24 hour shifts or three vacation days to work one. But now when it comes to like a bereavement day, how we do that? One shift is one bereavement day. Or are you taking eight hours off of bereavement on the twenty-four hour shift? I know you provided a lot of examples in November about uh, how other counties do it around this, but their policy didn't specifically state like if it is their shift and what are their shifts? Are they twelve-hour shifts? Are they twenty-four hour shifts? So that's that's just something I'm interested in is what other county what shifts other counties work. Um, Laporte County works at twenty-four forty-eight. Uh, LaPorte County is one example that the commissioners approved it. Uh, Pulaski works 24-48. They don't have that approval in right now. Um, so they're they're on the, you work three shifts to get one day off. Or you claim three shifts to get one day off. Um, Cass County does the same thing, 24-48. Um, all fire departments are either 24-48 or they're on the 5-3-4 uh, schedule. Bigger headache. Kelly days and all that. I'm not doing that. Um, it's 
South End Fire, same thing, 2448. Uh, the fire I came from, 2448. Uh, everybody's on a 24 hour shift. Uh, the only one I know that does 12 hour shifts, Lutheran Ambulance, which is obviously a huge hospital, um, but they work 12s. Uh, okay, I get it. But that 12 obviously is going to be a harder shift to schedule when you're short staffed as it is. So. Yeah, I agree. It's how it's set up right now is not working. So we right. need to come up with something. Right. But maybe that's something that he can work mm -hmm. with Justin with too to try to figure out. Mm -hmm. Because right now our policy, you earn point <laughs> da, 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 da in vacation per hour you work, not including overtime. It works like that for all the departments, but we kind of left EMS out of that. Right. So maybe we need to structure their mm -hmm. point, blah, 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 to their shifts. Right, right. Yeah. Probably work best. So we can look into that yeah. one. I do have a question if you don't mind. With the you requiring the part timers to work 24 hours in a month time or in a 30 day time. Sign period, up, yeah. Should that be in our handbook, our mm -hmm. personnel policy? Yes, sure. So we really need to get that changed in our okay. handbooks. I will forward that to you. Okay. Um now does that need to come up at another commissioner's meeting? Or how you would well, it, I'm the, just asking. It, they'll have to approve the change to the handbook. Okay. But that's it. So for both the um, the part time and then the full time working one. Do we have to put that in the handbook? Requiring them to work one. What was it? One weekend day every three weeks. I would. Yes. Okay. Okay. I will bring that. I will. Do I send it to you? Yes, yeah, send it to me. I'll forward it on to Justin. Okay. And then he can make our changes to the handbook. Absolutely. And then I can let you know when that comes mm -hmm. up for approval. Okay. Absolutely. I'll take care of that. Okay. All right. And we're, I'm going to work with Justin on the sick time vacation tab. Yeah. I mean, you can myself on number. Okay. We can talk to her. I'd like to know a little bit more about how your current time is structured. And okay. Examples from other towns and counties that I can That's see where you kind of talk details yeah. about how you think it works best. Okay. I'm glad to do that. Okay. All right. Thank you for your time, everybody. Come on up, Lisa. Thank you guys for having me today. Um, first thing, real quick, I would like to introduce Dr. Reichart. He is our current uh, interim school director, uh, superintendent of Knox Schools. And uh, so we are in the process of, well, the school board is working on a job description for a new school director. That job will be posted by the end of the month, and hopefully a new school director will be in place by the first of April. So the main reason for my visit today is to um, provide the updated contracts for skill and foundation. After the last meeting, I made all of the requested required changes. And so I am presenting these for approval based on our discussion at the last meeting. And then will these also need to be at the council meeting tonight? Um, tonight for the council, I would just talk to them about, it, about what was or wasn't approved or whatever okay. happens here. Okay. And my understanding was that there was a particular pot of money available for the foundation and skill for this year. So I set both contracts up based on um, the dollar figure that you guys had provided. <laughs> and one other thing that I did was I added a little bit of information about management of the firewall and the lead track, mm -hmm. which is part of the mm -hmm. um, extra things that we do, I guess, for the county. For the skill board, was there only going to be one member of the council appointed that board, or was it there one member of the commissioners as well? I don't remember. Um, but for skill, they had just asked for one council, council? member. Okay. Our board, I believe, is the And just a side note on our board uh, makeup, we have reduced our board members by a third uh, from a year ago. Mm -hmm. So um, we're, you know, we're still whittling that down, but uh, we have made huge strides in a year 
to help uh, reduce that number. And Lisa, Charlie and Mark had been appointed to your board at the last meeting. Okay. So I forgot about that to tell you that. Okay. Charlie, surprise, you weren't here. You were appointed. <laughs> so our board will have Charlie and Mark. And, Mark. Mm -hmm. and then Chancellor don't know yet. Okay. It looks more in line now. Yeah. No doubt. Mm -hmm. um, we do the like both at the same time. We're going to do them separate. You can do them both at the same time. You, know, right. you do blah, blah, blah. And well, I make a motion that uh, we accept as written the uh, contract for Star County Economic Development and uh, also the Skill Center. I'll second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. Right. Right. Those are the originals. I don't have sign here on them, but if you okay, guys can sign, sign them. yeah. Sorry. Maybe in the future, and I don't know that this is, you know, discuss it, but maybe. Um, you know, after we've done this, this is like our second or third year in a row where we've done an annual contract. Maybe in the future we can talk about so we don't have to do this every year, right. maybe two or three two, years. Two or so, yeah. <clears throat> Only other thing, so a couple of things I left you guys with a copy of the um, December activity report. And you guys had asked for an annual report. So we, uh, Mary and I worked on an annual report. Now it looks a little bit different than last year's, but apparently somebody didn't like the way it looked last year. So we're, you know, we're kind of making this up as we go and hopefully in a format that is easy to kind of digest. But it's for your reading pleasure, and uh, maybe I can come back in a month and you guys can let me know if you're good with the format of the report. Right. Okay. And other than that, a couple of quick things we're working on. Uh, we're working on a vendor list for um, the solar projects. If anybody knows of anybody who has bulk hay or straw for overseeding, we, we need to add them to our list. So get with us on that. Um, another thing, so moving forward, we are, um, well, right now I'm working with Common Blue Labs. They have, uh, are there a release out at the Poppins building? So they're going to be moving into the Poppins building and uh, they will be here to talk about the possible incentives from the county since now they will not be in the city limits. They'll be out in the county and the rural opportunity zone. So um, at some point we'll, probably need to talk about what can I offer as incentives that the county may be able to provide so that I'm just not winging it and say, well, maybe we can do this or maybe we can do that. If we can just have like a, you know, sort of like a list of incentives available for companies that uh, come along. That's really about it. There's a lot of stuff in the activity report and the annual report and uh, I am available if anybody has questions. Dr. Reichert, did you want to say anything or? No, just that uh, I heard Dan on the CDL and that's one of the things that Skill is going to be working on is seeing if we could somehow pull off a local CDL type training mm -hmm. so that I know there's a couple other businesses here in town that would like to have the same great. opportunity. So right now it's a huge demand, <laughs> so we're working on that. So just want to let you know. Okay, thank you. Yeah, because I run into a lot of people who they don't have CDLs, but they they sure would like to right, get right. a chance and get a job. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, uh, EMA uh, Director Willie. Good morning. Good morning. So, can you just put a package here? Each one of the labels, but the first one that is presented is so back on December 1st, Dan Diaper, Texas. When they initially applied for a grant, they got a kickback saying that Stark County was not 88 compliant. So, Stark County, myself, had filled out a DCAC. 
which basically allows Clark County to show good faith and COVID in a quarter case in 2022. That allows theater departments, highway department, anywhere that relates to PennDOT for grant funding to still get grants approved to Clark County. With that process, though, a lot of red flags were brought up for PennDOT. Basically, saying when they did a compliance check with Clark County, they noted some errors. Um, and they basically said in order to show good faith and to show good cause to, to update it so that not only are we compliant, but also the citizens that start finally have access to ADA compliancy. The departments have access to the ADA compliancy as well. It's, you know, everyone's on the same page. So within these packets, um, I've, I've updated all the uh, ADA compliance stuff that was found on our website. Um, just basically changed the language from today's version back when I think it was written in 2012. Mm -hmm. uh, the next packet there is you know some of the Disabilities Act. Um, I don't read it all, but basically it states that Star County doesn't discriminate against anybody with disabilities, whether it be employment, they have open communication, as well as they have postings on the websites as well as the auditor's office. Um, to where the public wants access to this, they have access to that one. Um, the next packet is the grievance procedure under the American Disabilities Act. This is a requirement to end up as well as the ADA, Title II and Title VI. Um, basically, it's, it's a notice to the public where if they do have issues, they can file certain complaints and attach it to the grievance form as well as what is sent. Um, it breaks it down to basically if they're not happy with, say, your ADA coordinator, they then reach out to the board of commissioners, and that has the timeline of you know 10 15 days of board of commissioners have to you know respond to the same grievance. And that's not the next thing to call for an ADA requirement. Um, the last two are um, Basically, some of all it's a request to the commissioners, the board of commissioners, to adopt set ordinance, um, which basically lists um, grievance procedures, who your ADA coordinator is, how it's going to be filed, what's you know what is the county going to present on the website, um, to add the grievance policy as well as the provisions to be compliant, as well as in the resolution. Um, which it's a bit of more detail as to you know, who was in where. So if Mark was here, he would also bring up that uh, Mark, myself, and Dan that were attorneys from Indianapolis, mm -hmm. which is that you know, December thing. They were they sent back a quote. Um, obviously that's outside of my purview mm -hmm. um, to assist us with the transitional plan, which coincides with your ordinance as well as your regulations right now. And then today I asked for is I don't know if Mark is present for this, but to this is signed into the ordinance as well as the resolution. We adopt and approve the reading policy and procedures. Once those are all hypothetically approved, we then update the website so that the grading policy is updated on the county's website as well as the, uh, the notice to the public in the ADA. Like I said, the last ordinance that I found was it showed in the 2016 file, but then if you actually read it, it says it was adopted in 2012. Uh -huh. And that's one of the ones that says that end up saying they're paying more attention to everything just because of the right. past, so then when you follow up, now it's you know, the Pandemic basically. Um, there were more of a yearly update, so if they do pull up the website, we at least show the good faith as well as the main compliance. Um, the next I guess I'll throw this one out here too, this is just handed to me. Um, when doing the ADA, you have to do self evaluations of the county's assets. Mm -hmm. um, one of the assets I went to is the EMS buildings. Um, in 2012, I mentioned the three bases. In 2016, I mentioned we have the bases, but the public doesn't utilize said bases. Well, when speaking with the crews, their doors are always unlocked. 
they have, especially the North Judson and the early families, mm -hmm. they have public that come to their bases. I know common sense if you have an emergency call 911, mm -hmm. but growing up in your small town, it's usually, oh, I know I need the animal space, I'll go there for assistance. So we really done a self evaluation for those three bases just because they are on the county's mm -hmm. assets. Mm -hmm. Eric then went up and got a quote for all the doors, um, just because with the ADA compliance, you have to have the door widths are minimum 34 inches, but then when they swing open, they have to have a 90 degree opening. Mm. He said there are six doors and two to three bases that we replaced, as well as the 10 doors. Um, and so he was just quoted for just labor alone was $2,500. And then for the doors itself, you're probably looking at another two to three thousand dollars um with the ada it's not a requirement to fix everything at once but it's at least to know that there are certain projects that you can figure out as to being severe not severe or minor um, an example would be uh, i read in one of the old ada's the elevator in the courthouse it's not ada compliant but since it's been acknowledged and they're making efforts by posting the extra signages or as well as providing extra openings to utilize for ADA, you know, it's one of those, yes, we know there's that, but it's not an immediate fix. So this includes the doors then? That is not included. That's why this yeah, is just labor. Because we don't know the prices of the doors. Yeah. Really. Yeah. But he's going to have to get that for yeah, the, move on this. the transitional plan that we're kind of basing off of 2017. It quoted in one of the early paragraphs that it was like $40,000 was initially allotted, but then to be determined as the total cost. Um, that was one thing that NDOT had brought up was that $40,000 hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. So if there wasn't more of a in depth. Okay, this is the, these are the areas that we need or know that need fixed in the mm -hmm. ADA. Mm -hmm. Then obviously you're gonna have to change the 40,000. So that's kind of where that quote is coming from as to you know, even the simple doors, you're looking at maybe five thousand dollars for everything to mm -hmm. be fixed. So then obviously the transitional plan, which I don't know if the attorneys are gonna take over or not, it's gonna be changing that funding. Which then might make some people freak out because there's not a line item, but there really doesn't have to be a line item. Just you just have to update, mm -hmm. and then it should be good thing. So, are you asking the commissioners to pass the resolution ordinance today? That's what I'm asking. As well as the doctor to then update the uh, website to show the, the updated grievance, the updated uh, grievance form. And obviously to update it in the auditor's office. Yeah, I'd recommend the adoption of both the ordinance and the resolution. Um, you know, like he, he discussed the biggest issue is showing that you've got steps in place to adhere to what we call procedural due process. They don't expect you to be omniscient and and be able to point out on a specific basis what your delinquencies are, but if you provide a procedure by which somebody can supply a complaint that's reviewed, that's that's the real goal here. Again, the words there are good faith efforts to correct any delinquencies. So, you know, the ordinance as the general applicability and then the resolution to appoint an actual coordinator is all part of that procedural due process procedure. So I, I think it's, I mean, it has to be done. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to figure out how to word it. I just did it. I want the ordinance. Uh, make a motion for the ADA for the, for the grievance procedures. That one. This one. That's pretty much a resolution. You, want, Pardon? you can just read the titles if you want. Okay, resolution of Stark County and then adopting the Americans with Disabilities Act coordinator and procedures. Do you want to sign my copy? Yes. Do you not have a stapler? Do I need to get you a stapler? I see you bent the corners on all the yes. things. I will get. I'll get your stapler. You got a stapler. You got a stapler. Just one thing. So bend the corners with my next Oh my gosh.
Do you need paper clips too? I got those. They got those. <laughs> I'm not having <laughs> leave from my office and tell them I told you to give you some staples. For instance, I'm sitting up there, and this is my apologies for Rachel brought this to my attention. Um, I was given access to what's that thing called? Sand I guess. Oh, yeah. In order to apply for grants throughout the county, um, it was mentioned in one of the by Mr. Pierman that the grant coordinator was kind of called under the DNA director in that aspect. So when I was given access on it, um, Eric had reached out to me for this firefighter. Um, the fiscal year 2021 assistance to firefighters grant, um, which ends on the 21st of this month, so three days from now. Um, Eric had requested that through the last HC for the, the training that we did at North Jefferson St. Pierre with the LAPC, it was noted that the organization, his organization did not have the correct radios equipment oh. to handle the mass, the mass incident that calendar. So on January 12th, I had submitted this grant um, to basically the grant request is a total for $213,649. It covers um, eight mobile radios, all for the ambulances, um, as well as the trailer, the EMA's trailer, um, as well as the backup. So that if there is, we all know technology, something fails, we don't have a backup. Mm -hmm. As of right now, there's we don't have backups. Um, it's also, he had synced in there or sent a quote for the Apple tablets and keyboards to get, a, I guess he's having issues with his computers. So to make a more streamlined, an Apple tablet was three hundred fifty dollars versus a computer is thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. um, so that was in there, as well as portables for all the crew members were in there, and then as well as mobile ten software licenses, which I guess is a which Eric was saying next week to be more diligent on this. It's like the current CAD system that Dispatch uses, um, the Active Nine One One, but it links, syncs up to your tablets to where it shows the crews where the call's going, the information to it, which limits, you know, it uses less radio frequency or radio communication. Um, so that is in there. Um, so that was that grant. Um, like I said, it closes the 21st. There's two additional grants that just opened up for the fire departments. One is for retention of volunteer firefighters. Basically, it's a grant that would cover their bunker gear, PPE, all that aspects. I reached out to the fire chiefs to basically submit that information to them so that if they're interested, they will, you know, propose a, a quote for mm -hmm. what their needs are. As, and then another one that just opened yesterday was more for the education of the firefighters. Um, when listening with what Lisa was talking about with the advanced EMT aspects yeah. of the educational, this could be an educational grant um, that doesn't have clear incentives of upon completing the, at the uh, certifications. Um, so those two are basically right now, or they just opened yesterday and last Friday. And they go to February 4th and then February 16th before the end of the year. I told him with new grants, he probably needs to come to the board to let them know, <coughs> let you know what's going on, because not only like even if we did get all that equipment, we have to pay the money to maintain it down yeah, the road and we yeah. ha may have to pay for licenses mm -hmm. where there may be grant matching. So that's something you, you definitely kind of want to get the commissioners and yeah. council's blessing for. Yeah. Basically, you're asking them, what's your... What are you asking then? It's more of a need to, I'm not need to know, that's correct terminology. Uh, you already uh, applied for this one, right? Yeah, this one's already been applied okay. for. Um, but going forward with the recommendation mm -hmm. from Rachel, mm -hmm. the open grants, or grants that become available to the county, if certain departments want access to it, to present to you guys mm -hmm. to say, hey, this is what they're thinking about. This is what mm -hmm. we're applying for, granted. As grant processes go, it's a hit and miss if you're approved or not. Mm -hmm. um, but then, obviously, if there is that matching or that form of formality, then the policy will come back to you mm -hmm. and then the council will come back after. Okay. Wrap that one up, good. Yeah. So, we, 
don't need that to find us then on this, right? No. Not today. No. Okay. That sounds good. Thank you. <laughs> All right. uh, motion to approve the vendor claims in the amount of $186,158.36. So moved. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion to approve the payroll claims in the amount of $269,654.31. So moved. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I have to make a motion on these, or because maybe there's that was already who you appointed. Yeah, I just need you to sign up. Okay, that's it. I forgot that I was even in there. Really, I need you to sign this too. Yeah. I guess it's already, we already did this. Yeah. yeah. Motion to approve annex keys to uh, Joseph Williams. Um, I'll second. All those in favor? Mm -hmm. uh, the engineering contract with solar companies. Yes, so I wanted to put that on the agenda. I'm glad Bose is here too, because I've spoken with <clears throat> both of the applicable solar companies. So basically what we've been talking about, Bose provided me with a copy of the engineering contract, proposed engineering service contract, and it had a uh, uh, various appendices. Um, we'd also gotten a letter from Nextera talking about reimbursement of engineering expenses. Um, so I've been speaking with Bob Aloy from Territorial Engineering. Um, and in the letter I got from Nextera, there were three items that Nextera wanted to see incorporated into our service agreement with the engineer in order to reimburse us. I think their biggest concern was just timeline because they thus far have not been provided a finite timeline for completion of that engineering side of things. So um, Bob, in discussing these with him and, and requesting these additions to the service agreement, had said his costs are going to be, he estimates $7,500 to $10,000. Nextera is offering to reimburse up to $5,000. So you can see, obviously, where there's a little bit of a difference. So I called, I think you call it Stark Solar up here, Mammoth, for all intents and purposes, one of their representatives on Friday and said, hey, you know, one of the other solar companies is offering to reimburse engineering fees, but this is for the whole project. Are you guys also in favor of reimbursing up to that $5,000 amount so it's no money out of pocket for the county? Um, she had said that uh, she'd have to get approval from the owners. She didn't think it would be an issue, but you know, it was beyond the scope of her to say yes. So I sent a copy of the engineering contract to Mammoth for them to review and get back with us. I also reached out to Nextera because Bob had indicated that the timeline request that Nextera put in there to have these engineering reports back Bob had said, well, that's too tight of a timeline for me because there's additional recommendations I want to make to the planning commission, foliage coverage, density of plants, things of that nature, just so it coincides with what he sees in other areas of the state. And he said, that's too tight of a timeline. Sorry, I know I'm giving you a lot of information, but uh, so I called next era's attorney, Matt, and said, hey, Matt, um, you know, this is our issue here. If you want to see these incorporated into the service agreement, your timeline's too tight. And Matt goes, well, that's not a big
anybody for the city planning? Right? No, I don't have anybody for city planning. Peter, I, Peter Bola. I got one for that. So, Bill o Olinger. Mm -hmm. Like he's interested. Yeah. Thank you. Does he have to have? He's got the requirements or? Uh, yes. Is there a motion of motion? I'll second that. All those in favor, aye. These spots are been uh, advertised. Yeah, the WKVI has been putting out. I mean, I can I can publish them in the newspaper if you want me to too. Yeah, that's a good. You um, do have now one opening for the CBC board. Angie uh, basically represented the Coons Lake area. Um, I don't have anything for that. Okay, Republican or Democrat? Which is going to be? Um, they were already on the board. I mean, they've been on the board. Yeah, it's not part on this one. I mean, R or D. I really don't know. I think it was the R spot. Are you sure? Yeah. I'm not sure. I don't remember. Okay, I'll wait. Mark it wider. <laughs> <laughs> the last one I have is Judy Caldale for the internal control. That's fine. Yeah, I'll nominate Judy for internal control. Second that, all in favor, aye. Executive mm -hmm. order closing the county buildings. I guess that was at least mask required. Is that what you mean? Yeah, executive order closing the buildings. You still want to leave the buildings closed and well by appointments only. Yeah, right, right, right by appointment only. Um there's the <coughs> order for that. Or ordinance. Order. Seriously. <laughs> I just I just drafted the same way your last one was. I just put it in a different form. My format. <laughs> right, right. We'd have to have a like a date that we would end this or not, or I mean, it could go until our next meeting, mm -hmm. or yeah, unless you want to call a special meeting in order to reverse it. Or you, yeah, because we usually play it by each meeting and what we feel. This we can, I, I, I think we should at least till the next meeting. Yeah, just a little bit longer to try to. Hopefully this stuff starts coming back down. This is, you know, the fact that doing this is for the employees in the building, and, you know, it's kind of to protect them since they're under, you know, we have to worry about yeah. that. So. Well, and, and we, yeah, we had a COVID outbreak in some of our buildings, right. so we're protecting right. the public right. as well. Yeah. For... You know, it's not like we're just doing this just to do it. Right. There's reasons behind it. <laughs> so. I and think till we'll leave this in place till at least our next meeting and then reassess it. Okay. And we're still fully accessible to the public. There's right. no yeah. nothing that they can't yeah. get done. Mm -hmm. Call or make an appointment mm -hmm. or anything. Yeah. Motion to approve this ordinance. Make your motion. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.
just the same what we had before. Do we have this before? No, no we, we've, never, we've had never had a temporary work from home policy before in place. I mean, mm -hmm. we allowed employees to mm -hmm. do it, but we've never had a policy okay. in place. It's been coming up a lot, right. and I think we just need something in place right. in case mm -hmm. there's any issues down the road. Yeah. Motion to approve. Yeah, motion to approve the resolution. Yeah, make a motion to approve a uh, resolution allowing uh, conditional and temporary remote work by county employees during the COVID. -19. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. And uh, we had a request from the surveyor's office to purchase a well, a side by side, a smaller one, and then a trailer, but to utilize on the ditch banks and what else he has to look at. Uh, there's this one was from Attica Motorsports. That's for the 2022 Players Ranger. That was. 11,915. And uh, there's some factory auto group that was a 2022 14 foot utility. The 2,642 is what they were wanting for that. Well, actually, you know, the places he has to go and things out there, he could definitely use this. I mean, we've talked about it years back, too. I mean, if you were even. Oh, yes, I can. I mean, we talked about it. I probably was here somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I'd make a motion when you get both of these. Yeah. Oh, that's from QCAP. All right, I'll go for QCAP. Well, uh, first thing, both of those. Pardon? Is that two separate things? Yes, two it's two separate things. Yeah. One was for the trailer. What's the price? Uh, $11,915 for the uh, Polaris. And the trailer is $2,642. Okay. And I need mm -hmm. those to. Yeah. So you made a motion. I'll second that. All those in favor? I, I don't know. I just kind of want to adjust and have a look at over to make sure he knows what's going on. That's it. Right, her deal in the oh, uh, which I believe uh, Marty did brief him of that. Yeah, yeah. I just want to make sure. I mean, he was at the house at seven o'clock this morning, you know, beating up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> <laughs> so that's pretty much all I really got. Is there anything for us, Justin? Anything, anything keeps pressing. Um, we talked pretty at length about what we are with the solar, mm -hmm. solar stuff. Mm -hmm. Marty has done a real nice job, which I really appreciate briefing me on the various pieces of litigation you have, mm -hmm. um, which I appreciate. And uh, doesn't sound like any of them are any of are of any immediate concern to us. It's just a matter of us substituting me and the ones where other things have taken a lead right. on it, but. Would appreciate it. Okay, else. Anyone else have anything for us? Executive order does not apply to schools, right? That's no, correct. it's cor that's correct. It's in there. <laughs> <laughs> it's just government building. <laughs> that's all. 
Thank you. No, nothing else. Motion as there. We get motion for assessment.